Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Now we select the fully qualified domain name that we want to use for our first domain in our forest. And this is going to be a completely individualized design choice but it does need to be a fully qualified domain name. So I couldn't type in something like IT DVDs, just IT DVDs. That's not a fully qualified domain name. A fully qualified domain name has to have a top level domain like itdvds.com. I could use this if I'd like, or I could use itdvds.net, or I could use corp.com. I can use whatever I'd like because normally this is just going to be for our internal Active Directory domain. Now some people like to use the same domain name that they use on the internet, like itdvds.com, but others like to use uh, an internal top-level domain like itdvds.local. This is not something that can be used on the internet and therefore it can be seen as being more secure. Also if I use itdvds.com, I'll probably have to set up what's called split brain DNS where we have our internal itdvds.com zones and then we have external itdvds.com zones and they have different IP addresses. Now some people see this as making things more complex and like to use a domain name that can be used on the internet but maybe not exactly the same as the one they're currently using, let's say, for their external website. So I may use itdvds.net and then go register that domain name with something like GoDaddy or Network Solutions. And then I would be able to use external DNS and internal DNS and not have to worry about whether or not I'm changing what I'm already using for external DNS, like itdvds.com. But again, this is a completely individualized design choice. And for the most part, whatever you choose, uh, you're going to be able to work around whatever issue that your particular choice brings up. Another thing some people like to do is to keep it generic so that if you know your company gets bought up or something like that, you don't have to go through the trouble of trying to change your domain name. I'm going to go ahead and use itdvds.local in this example. So I'll go ahead and click next. It's going to make sure that this forest name is not already in use. And now we're going to select our forest functional level. We'll talk about exactly what each forest functional level means, but for now all we need to know is that we're probably going to want to set it at the highest level possible. And what makes it the highest level possible is going to be the operating system of your domain controllers. So whatever the lowest operating system you have as a domain controller in your forest, that's what you're going to want to set it at. So uh, let's say you know you, you plan on have adding Windows Server 2003 domain controllers in this particular forest, well then you're going to want to set it at Windows Server 2003. Because if you set it at Windows Server 2008, then you're not going to be able to add Windows Server 2003 domain controllers anywhere in your forest. But the reason you want to set it at the highest possible level is because, for the most part, each new forest level, functional level, brings new features and new security. So I'm going to select Windows Server 2008 R2. This is my first domain controller, my first forest. And I know that we're not going to be adding older operating systems as domain controllers in this forest. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't add older operating system as member servers, as members of your domain. It just has to do with the domain controllers. So I'm going to select Windows Server 2008 R2, click Next. It's going to examine my DNS configuration. This is where it's going to find that, hey, you don't have DNS installed. Do you want to go ahead and install it? And there it is. I can check the box or leave it checked to install DNS, and that's what we're going to do. Or if I don't want to install DNS, maybe I'm using another DNS server, I'd want to go ahead and uncheck this box. You'll notice we have to check Global Catalog because we need at least one Global Catalog server in our domain and in our forest. So since this is the first domain controller, it has to be a Global Catalog server as well. 
So I'll go ahead and click Next. And I get a little warning here that it says that it could not make this DNS server authoritative for this particular uh, domain, RITDBDs.local domain. And normally it tries to set up a delegation automatically. And if we are installing or uh, creating a subdomain of a domain we already had, then most likely we wouldn't get this warning because it would be able to set up that delegation. But we'll talk about more about this when we get into DNS later on. So I'll go ahead and con continue, click yes. Now we get to decide where to put our Active Directory database files, our log files, and our sysvol folder. And for performance reasons, it's best practice to put each of these files or each of these folders on different physical drives. So that's similar with something like a SQL Server where we put the database files and the transaction log files on separate drives so that there isn't contention. Now if your domain is going to be fairly small, it's normally not a problem to put them on the same drive. Again, it's for performance reasons why you'd want to separate each one of these. In your sysvol folder, this is where things that need to be accessed by uh, member computers of your domain. This is where we normally put those files, things like group policy objects, logon scripts. Those will go in this sysvol folder. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to create our Directory Services Restore Mode Administrator account. This is if we need to actually restore Active Directory. We need to know this password. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in this password. And we're going to be talking a lot about Active Directory Services Restore Mode as well. So I'll just go ahead and click Next. We get a summary here. We can actually export these settings and it will export it to an answer file that we can use to do an unattended installation later on if we'd like to another domain controller. I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. Okay, and the installation was complete. So I'll go ahead and click Finish. And we'll go ahead and reboot. And then we've created our first forest and our first domain.